The family of former Member of Parliament Julian Silveira and the media were barred from entering the court this afternoon as the former legislator made his first appearance before a judge to answer the charge that he murdered his wife Melissa. His daughter and her mother were visibly disappointed when Justice Vinette Graham Allen made the announcement minutes after 2 p.m. One has to exercise discretion in each case, the judge said. Graham Allen said family members and the media will be permitted inside the court at a later date. Meanwhile, Sylvia was remanded and will return to court on the 8th of February. Following the hearing, Sylvia's attorney, Peter Champigny, told reporters that his client maintains his innocence. Champigny also spoke out against remarks being made on social media platforms regarding Silvera, expressing concern for the businessman's children. I firstly am going to say that I have to follow the strictures that were imposed by the court in terms of this preliminary aspect of the case and my discourse will, with you will be limited. What I will say, however, is that the matter is fixed for the 8th of February when uh, by then, it is expected that the relevant documentation would have been provided to the defense. That's the first thing. And secondly, I think it's important to note, and I'd like to take this opportunity that, um, to say that observations have been made in social media, which by the way, isn't social at all, um, but such is the nature of life. But I would caution, and, I, and that may be an exercise in futility, because there are many persons who have sought to try and convict already. And uh, that's unfortunate, and I will not go beyond that. And just to say that the file is incomplete, and there is a particular document that we need to inspect to determine the way forward in the way of an application for bail for Mr. Silvero. Beyond that, myself and Ms. Patrice Riley, who represent Mr. Silvero, uh, would not want to comment um, and go into the details and intricacies of the matter because that would be simply adding fuel to fire and to cause the discourse, the public discourse to go on and again I think it's important that uh, irrespective of your views there are young children involved and it is a very 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 difficult time for these three children. I think that's, uh, that's been euphemistic and I am asking the public, I'm pleading, maybe again an exercise in futility, but to exercise some level of restraint, not barring anyone from um, their constitutional right of freedom of expression and so on, but the life and the role of a defense lawyer is to provide defense, everybody, every person, every citizen has a right to an attorney and once we are in receipt of full disclosure, then we'll be able to determine how we treat this matter going forward. How Thank you very much. Uh, understandably, um, very apprehensive, very concerned, and as, 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 as one would expect. Uh, beyond that, again, I would not want to say anything at this stage. And he maintains that he's innocent of the charge? He has maintained his position. He has maintained his position of innocence from day one. I am not saying that he is, because I, got his, I understand that there was a report to that effect. No lawyer should ever really say that, because if you, if you were so certain, then you'd be a witness. But certainly what I can say with great emphasis is that he is indicating that he's innocent. We have our instructions, we have our job to do, and it is for the court, ultimately, and members of the jury to determine whether or not he's innocent. That's not my role. My role, our role, is to provide a defense as per our instructions. Wherever, wherever our instructions lead us, that's where we go. Within the confines always, acknowledging and consistent with the canons of the profession and the rules and good ethics. That is to also to be emphasized.